Trading is an integral part of GPO's history and GPO as a game. However, it's changed a lot since it was first introduced. I mean, if we go back to update zero, the style of trading was very much just devil fruit trading. You, could do, you would drop devil fruits and you would trade it that way. However, it's evolved, I guess, all the way to where, what we have currently, which is a fully working trading hub, item trading. So in today's video, I'm gonna go in, into a discussion pretty in depth of the evolution of GPO's trading and how it's affected the community. To make this more easy to understand and more organized, I'm gonna split the video up into four main parts. The f each part will basically be about different stages of training in GPO's history, with the fourth part being a, well, my opinion and a kind of look into the future of what GPO's trading might have or might evolve into in the far future. I'm talking update four, update five, you know, in the future, not right now. So let's get into the first part. The first part is update zero. So in update zero, the only kind of trading we had in the game was dropping devil fruits. You couldn't trade items and there was no trading area. It was all about dropping devil fruits. At that time, I mean, any devil fruit below Logia, or sorry, below, le below legendary, didn't really have much value. I mean, at the time, you only really had uh, Barry. I mean, you, yeah, it was just Barry, really. That was the only real rare, because Bomu wasn't added until update one, I believe. So there was that. But in terms of trading, it was only it was a very legendary dominated market you could only really the only real thing that had value was devil fruits that were like low gears and legendaries and if, if, if we're talking about update zero the mythical i guess categorization didn't even exist so it really was like legendary fruits dominated the market now it actually took a while before we even got an official like trading area for fruits and that was introduced in update two, when they added the, the trade island. Now the trade island was partially a response to a huge rise in, I guess you could call it scamming, uh, where people would just basically not go through with a the trade. They would trick people and take their fruits. Now Foyu took a stance against this and said, I'm going to introduce trade island. It was supposed to be, and it was marketed as the true solution to scamming and exploiters and everything. It was going to be exploit proof and scam proof according to Foyu. However, it didn't turn out that way. As anyone who's actually played during that time and actually saw the trade island, it wasn't actually as safe as people thought it was. Hundreds of people got uh, scammed and people would exploit. It was not a very good trading system. Now, it actually took Foyu a while to get the uh, actual the item trading that we know today and that occurred in update 3.5, when Foyu introduced Trade Hub. It actually took um, update 3 to go by, and then, I guess, a halfway update, which was when it was introduced, but that's beside the point. The point is, they introduced Trade Hub and item trading. Now, if we consider like how this affected the economy of GPO, it affected it hugely. Trading items meant that a drop that before had very little value outside of being valuable to yourself was now like a genuine trade value. I mean, before it was just a personal thing, like you would get a weapon or an item for yourself. Now you could get an item in hopes of using it to trade later on for fruits or just better items. I mean, of course, older items like candy cane definitely shot up in value during this period too because before they had no value i mean as a collector i already had candy cane bells bouquet i made an effort to collect every single event drop but i could not have foreseen item trading and that completely shifted the value and i was happy to have such a valuable item and when it came to that though definitely it changed the market completely and alongside this you had the addition of being able to trade game pass boats like Coffin Boat and Striker, and this completely changed the market too because it added a level of uh, pay to win because you could just buy boats and trade for fruits. Now, I think that's great because it gives people who don't want to spend money a chance to get ships that cost money, but overall I could see how some people would interpret it as being a bad thing. 
now this um this is kind of where it is i mean that's a brief explanation but over time it's evolved and trade hub is pretty exploit proof it's fairly hard to you know exploit in trade hub there are a few glitches but it's definitely a much safer method than the past two methods on part four i want to talk about what the future will hold for trading now one thing I do see in the future is I do see the economy growing and changing in a lot of different ways. So as we noticed with the item trading, it completely shifted values. But in the future, I think the addition of new items and rare items will definitely change things up because even now devil fruits dominate the market. But could it be possible for a fruit, sorry, for an item to overshadow this? I'm not sure what items they could add but perhaps it's some like almost unobtainable item. Not unobtainable because already that's a whole different category of its own. Event drops obviously are worth more, but what if it was like an item that would take hours of grinding to obtain, even more hours than you, the current ones do? Would it have enough value to overshadow Devil Fruits? I think maybe it could, especially with the way GPO is going, adding all these new weapons and items and such. And that's definitely a thing I see in the future. Although Devil Fruits will always be near the top or at the top because they are integral to a One Piece game. Now, when it comes to the mechanic itself, I think Trade Hub is fine for now, but I, I could definitely see some sort of like auction system being added. It really depends how valuable Peli will get, but right now you can't trade Peli to my knowledge unless you drop it, which, you know, it works, but it'd be cool to be able to put it in the uh, trade thing. Now, what if Peli had like substantial value? Then maybe you could even buy items with Peli from other players. Now that is something that would need a lot of trick. Cause like right now Peli's value is zero. It's pretty much valueless, um, especially end game. I mean, early game has some value, but end game it's pretty much useless. Now with the addition of buying clothes for Peli, buying items for Peli, maybe it will actually rise in value. I might be able to buy some like low tier rare items or maybe even a legendary item for Peli. If that ever does happen, I will be um, surprised and also pretty impressed with how Faye would have to do. Because Faye would, ha would have to make Peli valuable in game enough to like superset, or I guess uh, not superset, I mean um, overshadow the value of Devil Fruits, or I guess go above them, which would be a really, really hard thing to do because you'd have to add something that would have the value of Devil Fruit for Peli to give Peli that value. It's a very complicated situation, but it'd be really interesting to see. Now, outside of an auction system, the future of GPO, I mean, perhaps you could add gifting game passes. This is the thing I've thought about for a while. Imagine if you could gift somebody Devil Fruit Notifier, a game pass worth like, I think it's like over, I know it's somewhere in the ballpark of like $100, $80, around that kind of stuff. So if you could give somebody that game pass, think about like what you could get for that. Like how many Devil Fruits would you trade for a Notifier? Maybe even it would be like all the legendaries. I don't know, it's quite a big amount of money that you have to invest to get it. So if they added Game Pass trading or gifting, that would definitely change the market a lot. Now, that's kind of where I have to end the video because I don't really know what else to talk about in terms of the market and how it will look in the future. It's definitely a very interesting topic that I could probably go more in depth on, but like the future of GPO's trading is something that I'm going to be looking at, like watching carefully and definitely going to keep me interested because trading for a lot of people is so important to the game. Like, I don't think people realize how important a good trading system is because items a lot of the time have their value because they are valuable to collectors and to other players. Like, for example, the, the uh, Marine Cap. That's value is almost solely dependent on the fact that it's unattainable and requires, you know, it's it's a collector's item. And that just like, it shows the value of items and it shows the value of like, if somebody wants an item, it's that gives it value. So I, I definitely want to see how that, how that will play out in the future. Definitely interested. One thing I will say though, if you are looking to, I guess, have a advantage of other players in the future, make sure to get the event drops. Collectors, I mean, I'm a collector myself, but collectors of rare items in GPO will pay you a lot in terms of fruits and such. Not black marketing, but in terms of like rarer fruits and such. 
they will trade you a lot for those event event drops so make sure to collect your event drops every single event i know it's uh boring and it can be a little bit annoying but make sure to collect them they're very important and very rare now that is where i'm going to end the video if you enjoyed this video make sure to like comment and subscribe as always leave a comment down below showing your thoughts on, on the topic of the video in this, in this case trading and i will see you in tomorrow's video bye guys